Hello again, this is Kyle. Let's write some code. Now, if you came to this video hoping to learn how to yo-yo an actual yo-yo, I'm sorry, this video is actually about writing code and probably bears. So yo-yo is a library for building modular UI components. So if you're familiar with something like React, it's sim similar to that, but uh, really, really different. Now I've got my typical dev set up here and I'll have a link in the description to get that same development set up going for you. So now the first thing I'm going to do is go to my terminal here and I'm going to type npm install and install yo-yo -yo with yo-yo -yo, and this will uh, download it from npm and let us require it. So back here in my code on the index I'm going to require it by creating this variable called yo and do yo-yo -yo. and now I can use this library. So now we can create uh, HTML elements uh, by using yo as a tag for a ES6 uh, template literal using these gray back sensor or backticks here. And we can just type in HTML directly into here and it will convert this HTML um, into an actual real live uh, DOM element. So if we just want to create uh, a div that growls at us, we can do that. And so since this is a real live uh, HTML element, we can simply append it to our document body by doing document body append child and put it right there into our document body. So I'm going to go over here to my terminal and I'm going to start up my development server here at 9966 and refresh our page and you can see we have a div tag now that says gur at us. So that's cool, um, but now let's say sometime later, let's, uh, to be exact, let's do one second later. So I'll do a set timeout and say one second later. We want to change this, uh, this element to not say gur. We want it to say something maybe a little nicer. Uh, we need to update it. So we'll say yo.update and we give it the original element that we want to update. And then we give it the new element that we want it to change it to. So let's just change it here to an h1 tag and it will growl instead. And so now when we refresh, we'll say gur and one second later we get a big giant uh, growl h1 tag instead. Now if you're unfamiliar with uh, ES6 uh, tag template literals, uh, I did an earlier video on them uh, and I'll put a card up in the corner so you can check that out if you're curious. So tag template literals are great for composing HTML in your JavaScript. So let's say that we have uh, a list of bears here. Uh, I'll say bear bears and I don't know, the only ones I can seem to ever think of are these three, brown grizzly. Okay, so we have this list of bears. Now what we want to do is we want to turn this list of bears into uh, an element uh, that we can render to our page. And so what we want to do is uh, let's just create a function, a function that will create lists, lists of things. And we'll pass in uh, some items, and this will just be an array of items that we'll pass in. And so then we'll return this uh, yo element here and give it a ul tag. And so now here we can use a, an expression to loop through those items. So we can say map and go through each item here. And now we return another element to uh, append. And this will just be an li tag um, here. And this will just print the items that we pass to it. So now when we build this uh, um, element up, we can just say element. And we can call the list function and give it here our, our list of bears here. And this will build us a, uh, a simple little list, um, a list of bears. Now lists of bears are great and all, but we want to add more bears to this list. So I'm just going to add another li tag down here at the bottom. And this is going to be, uh, this is going to have a button, um, just a little, little button here. And this button is going to say uh, add, add bear to be more specific. And so when this button's clicked, we're going to call this function here. And so this function will be called anytime this button's clicked and we can do something with it. Now what we want to do is we want to add a bear to this list out here. And we can simply do it just by uh, pushing a bear directly on here because this is within the same scope here. Uh, this bears variable is accessible here to, um, to our list function. But that's not really, that doesn't make this element self-contained. It, it's kind of a little bit leaky. We want to, we want to provide a specific action that is called within our, um, with our element to add bears to it. So we can add here a second parameter um, called on add. And so all this will do is when this button's clicked in here, it will call this, uh, this callback function here. So now we can supply this callback function here, just like so. And we can push on our new bear 
onto um, our bears list. And so now that our data has changed, we simply update it by calling yo update, and we can update our list. So we give it our original element, and then we call the list again with our new list of bears that has been added to. And we can simply pass in the same callback function by saying, giving it a name here, and pass that back down into our list thing. That's completing the big cycle here. So now when we go to our page and refresh, we can simply add bears over and over and over. We'll add the same bear, but you know. Anyways, the cool thing about this is that this is just creating native DOM elements, which means that they're compatible with React, Ember, Angular. I mean, heck, even old jQuery plugins that you have lying around or just vanilla JS if you prefer that. Now you might be thinking, but wait, isn't the native DOM slow? And yes, some things are slow in the native DOM, but what we're doing here is we're just walking the DOM tree um, and that isn't slow. Uh, update basically uses DOM diffing just like a super fast virtual DOM would, but without the extra memory and file size overhead that comes with supporting a separate virtual DOM, we're just using the real DOM. Let's go ahead and create a separate component just for the button here. So we'll have a function that has gets past this uh, action, this callback function here, that's when it's clicked. And we can just copy out some of this stuff, return yo, and remove these li tags here. And when click is called, it will instead call this uh, click function here. There, now we have our own little button component and we can replace this one here by using an expression button and then pass in this on add uh, action here that we're passing down into here. So now when this is clicked, it will call this on add and the on add will come out here and call this uh, Alan add out here and push in a bear onto our list. So our add bear button's not looking too great. It has kind of sharp edges and I want it to be a little bit more rounder. So I want to apply some inline styles to it. And the simple way is to just say style equals and I can set the border radius here, uh, but that's kind of lame. I want to do it a, a little better way. Um, and so there's a library here. I'm going to go to my terminal and I'm going to type npm install dom css and I'm going to use this library to apply my inline styles. Now I'm going to type npm start, start up my dev server again, and I'm going to create a variable called css and require our dom css library. And so then now here down at the button, I can create a variable called el for elements and return that element again. And now using the CSS library, uh, I can apply this inline style to uh, my element. So here I'm going to say border radius is 10 pixels. So now the great thing about this uh, DOM CSS library is it will apply the vendor prefixes for you and it'll even do uh, the, add this pixels here so I, to numbers. So I don't even need to do 10 pixels. I could just do a number just like that. So now when I go to my page and I refresh, you can see that we have a, a more round add bear button. So hopefully you're thinking, wow, this is cool. I didn't learn how to yo-yo, but this is cool too. And if that's you, then please share the video and trick others into learning how to create modular UI components too. And if you want to see more videos, please subscribe. Thanks again for watching.